I've had a number of people ask me uh, how I get make sure I get dry air to my table and so I'm going to show you uh, at least what I do. Uh, there's a little bit of cheating here because I want you to notice here inside the shop uh, I'm at only about uh, 42 percent, 41 half, 42 percent of relative humidity. So I'm already starting out with uh, pretty dry air. The shop is air conditioning uh, although you see the temperature down there is uh, probably about 80 degrees. I think it's set for 79. Uh, but so the shop is air conditioned and therefore then dehumidified. I'm going to put this little cheap uh, relative humidity sensor outside and you'll see what I would have to deal with if I was not air conditioned. So here you see outside. It's been sitting out inside now for about five minutes. So I think it's come to a, a equilibrium. Uh, but you can see here that now I'm up almost to 70% uh, humidity. Uh, it looks like about 67, 68% uh, humidity. <clears throat> and uh, temperature up a little over 90 degrees. Uh, we're overcast today. Uh, so if it was not overcast, uh, this would actually be a little warmer. But uh, uh, so that's if I had to take outside air and dehumidify it or dry it, uh, that would uh, probably pose me a little bit more of a problem, but uh, being inside already starts with an advantage. <clears throat> I'm going to take you and uh, look at the diagram of what we what I'm doing, and then I'll show the actual physical hardware. So here's a schematic of what you're going to see. Um, this is obviously uh, the compressor, and it takes the output of the compressor on the high side, and I've colored it red because it's pretty darn hot and I run it into an aftermarket oil cooler uh, that has a fan that's cooling it. Now the, you'll see when I show you the compressor, it's actually the fan that cools the compressor that also does dual duty uh, pulling area, air over that aftermarket oil cooler. I can't remember how many rows it's got, uh, I don't know, probably 20, 25, etc. Uh, in that oil cooler. Coming out of the oil cooler now, the air has obviously cooled down a little bit and because it has cooled down, it has condensed. There's some water that is condensed in it. So the next thing it does is it goes into a water separator, which uh, provides a purpose, obviously, of taking the water out of that condensed uh, air. Uh, there's a little bit left, but this water separator does a pretty good job. And in fact, every time the compressor turns off, it empties. So it, it remains um, pretty dry. So then once it comes out of the water separator, then it's hopefully fairly dry. That's what goes into the air storage tank. So in the air storage tank is pretty dry air. And then so when I go to the plasma torch, I'm taking air from the storage tank, which is dry. And uh, that becomes my supply to the plasma torch. Probably once a month, I open the petcock on the bottom of this and very little, um, water comes out. I get uh, a few drops, a few spray, uh, but that's about it. So it works pretty good. So now I'm going to take you uh, over to the compressor and actually we're going to see those things in, in physical. So here is the compressor. Uh, it's a Bel Air. I think that's an 80, 80 gallon tank uh, at two stage. And so right away we see here is the output uh, from the high side comes around and goes into uh, behind which you can't see right now but it goes into that uh, uh, oil cooler now I'm gonna take you around the back side so we can see that I actually got to turn the compressor a little bit so we can get around the back side Okay, there you see the oil cooler that's um, essentially mounted on the shroud that goes over the uh, fan and the, and the belt and, and the dry belt and so forth. And so when the compressor is running, the fan that pulls air over the compressor to cool it also pulls air over top of that oil cooler. So that's what gives me the, uh, the air and the cooling. And so now coming out, uh, the uh, oil cooler now is this hose that comes around and goes into the water separator uh, here. And you, in, at the end of every uh, inflation, you know, once it kicks on, once it kicks off, this thing raises and uh, it dumps any water. 
So then out of the water separator, that's the feed line that goes into the tank. So dry air into the tank, reasonably dry air, pretty good. Then here is the um, supply uh, with a petcock comes over to a regulator. Uh, I regulate to about, uh, I don't know, 120 in the lines. I'm using PEX, uh, expansion PEX that then goes uh, all the way around the, the entire shop up at there. And then there are drops that come down uh, again with PEX at various locations wherever I, I need an air supply. So when it comes over then to the plasma table, which is right here, I then have a secondary system right here. And so, oops, sorry. Um, this line coming in is a supply line to the table. It goes to another regulator, and I regulate that down. Uh, Hypertherm recommends about 100, 110 pounds. Uh, then from the regulator, it goes into a second uh, water separator. Uh, I've not seen any water in that, so it gives me pretty confident that I'm, I'm getting the water all out. And then finally into a desiccant filter. Um, you can see the filter, the, the desiccant in there is nice and blue. When that turns pink, I uh, take it out and put it in the oven and uh, revitalize that. But I also keep uh, a supply of uh, beads so that uh, I don't have to stop cutting once I uh, change the pink beads out. So output of that then uh, goes into straight into the back of the uh, hypertherm. There's the input into the hypertherm. Hypertherm's got its own uh, filter water separator system, uh, but hopefully it's uh, not uh, having to do much work because I think I'm providing it already some pretty dry air. So that's it, nothing magic. I'm pretty happy with the system. I don't know how it would do if I was having to suck in outside air, see uh, you know what the efficiency would be, but inside here it's doing a real good.